So let's get started. What we are going to do today is whether you are from IT or management or security or just a user, I will make sure that all of you benefit from this session. And how am I so confident that I'll be able to do this? Because the concept of adoption is something which assumes all these entities are working together. So whichever part you are currently playing in the regular day-to-day -day business role, you will be able to understand and go back to your organization and contribute significantly. In the process, you will also benefit. Your organization will also benefit. So what are the topics we are going to cover? So long list of topics, but don't worry. First, in the first 10-15 minutes, I'm going to do a quick overview of what is the current state of adoption. And then we will go into a deeper thing. I'm assuming most of you know what I do, but in case there are some who don't know me, I have been in IT for the last 31 years. In the first half of my career, 15 years, I was hardcore IT. So I understand infra, security, dev, database, all of those things. I have worked a lot on end user computing as well during that time. But then from 2005 or 6 onwards, I focused on end user only. That means I stopped doing infra, migration, deployment, traditional IT, no programming. And I focused on how users' lives can be made better using technology fully. So that's what I do. I am not from Microsoft. I am not selling any products. So what you buy or don't buy doesn't benefit me in any way. Whatever I am showing you right now is based on what I have seen with customers and where I feel whatever experience I have got will help others do a better job. So first, we will start at absolute basics. What is adoption? Now, this may sound like a didactic thing or abhi kya bor kar rahe, but aisa nahi hai. The problem is many people don't know exactly what it means. Many people don't even know this word exists. They think ah, product le liya, dal diya, baat khatam. No, nothing like that. Just buy and deploy is not worth it. So you need a lot of stuff to be done. So what exactly is adoption in the simplest possible way? I will try to explain. So very simple. Adoption of what? First of all, technology. Okay. So that's another thing. When we say technology, what do we call technology? There, there are so many different things being thrown as uh, thrown at us every moment nowadays. Exactly what is technology? So let's define that first. So very important. When you want to try to use something which is a technology, it has to do one of the two things. Either it has to improve something which is happening or it has to give you something new which is useful. The technology may give you something very new, but it is useless to you. That's not technology from your point of view. So if one of the things is not happening, then ignore that technology. Don't buy it, don't adopt it. So this is the simple benchmark we apply. Fine. Now with that in mind, when we say adoption, what are we trying to do? All of us have various types of work to do. If you are management, your job is to manage, as the name suggests and then grow your business. If you are a user, you are doing some specific role in your department if, depending on your uh, domain or area of expertise. So you are supposed to do that part well. You have a job description, you follow it. And IT is supposed to make all this possible, deploy, migrate, all that. So each one of has some work to do, whatever may be your role. So the idea is very simple. You must do your work in an optimal way. Optimal means what? If there was a better, smarter, faster way of doing something, why would you do that same activity in a dumber, slower and stupid manner? Does not make any sense. It's a no-brainer. Nobody would want to do it. But you'll be surprised to know that this is exactly what happens. Most of the work we do is not optimal. It is suboptimal. Suboptimal means what? I could have done it in, say, three minutes, but I'm spending two hours for it. That is a waste of life. That's what is 
inefficient. So we want to achieve efficiency of work in every aspect we do. I am not saying you are not doing it. But mostly we do it on the business side, on the shop floor, in logistics, in finance management, HR management. But when it comes to office tools, that's where the problem is. Fair enough. So we will try to do it. Now, how do you do it? Because there is a problem. There are lots of tools and lots of features. So just because the work is getting done using one particular application and one set of features does not mean the method is optimal. It may still work. Yeah, the output may still be correct, but you are still wasting time and energy. So right tool in the right place, a very critical component. And this becomes very important because there are so many tools and so many features. So there are too many permutations to figure out. And all this, where, who should be affected, who should be doing optimally? It's not only few people, it's everyone in the organization. So that's what. Then why are we doing all this? Why are we attending this session to understand how to drive adoption? Why am I trying to make the world adopt office better just because we have nothing else to do? No, there has to be an ulterior motive. Everyone works with a motive. Even if it's selfish, it's okay. What is the motive everyone has? We want to grow. As a person, I want to grow. As an organization, I want to grow. Now, as a person, if I'm not efficient, if everyone in the organization is inefficient, how will the organization grow? So, it's all related. So, this is the end result. You will grow faster and with less effort, you will achieve more. Sounds like marketing spiel right now, but we'll figure it out. So, again, this is the objective. Now, with this in mind, let's understand, break it down. Let's see what are the kind of work we do, what are the tools available, and how do you propagate it across the organization. So three broad components. Now before we do that, like I am seeing here, there are users, there are IT, there are management. Uh, various roles are presented here. Fine. Now what each one of you will learn from this? Let's see. If you are a user, you will obviously understand how to make your efficiency better. But maybe I am talking about something which is targeted towards IT or security or business but you are just a user are you going to get bored when i'm talking about this no why because you you may be business or you may be user or you may be management but when i'm talking about what other roles are doing or not doing or should be doing you listen to it carefully and even if you are not in that role you know people in that role in your organization and think does this make sense in your organization? If yes, then you have to go and propagate what I am showing to you today to that team, whether it is management or IT or security. Or if you are IT and security, and then I am talking about something to do with users, you have to think, are my users doing this? In fact, there is every IT user is also a business user from the point of view of office. So wherever you can add value, even if it is not directly applicable to your role, you should do that. So after this session, irrespective of who you are, you have a broad understanding of what each role is supposed to do and why. And then you try to go back and bridge the gap between wherever there are lacunae. So irrespective of who you are, listen to what I'm saying carefully across all roles. Fine. So now let's come back to this and say what is work. Work again can be of so many different types but we are trying to simplify and make it generalized. The more you generalize, the bigger the impact is. I can tell you what HR can do better or what finance can do better or manufacturing can do better. That's detail by domain. I can even tell you further level of detail like what a treasury person can do versus accounts receivable can do or someone who is in design engineering versus mechanical engineering what can but that is going to affect a subset of people if we talk general it affects everyone and right now we are worried about everyone if few people become efficient organization does not become efficient so we have to have broad based impact to have broad based impact we have to generalize 
once general impact is achieved then you go into specifics or deeper or into more level of granularity so let's talk about work in general i know you are from different departments companies so work is one component tools or apps or features another component and organization itself which is the third component fine and people of course are interacting with all these so what is work very broadly very simple two types of work the work which i am supposed to do and the work which i do along with others even if you are a one person company you still have team work to do so don't say i am a one person company i don't do team work your customers your vendors your suppliers someone you will do team work with so when i say team work it is not just within your organization it is anyone you whom with whom you collaborate but what is this my work my work means what whatever comes to me naturally as a part of my role in the organization whoever you are you have a job description you have to follow it ideally exceed it only if you exceed the jd you are going to work so you have to execute it properly and efficiently even in that there are two types the one which i myself execute based on my experience my domain my expertise whatever i actually spend time and energy doing that job that's this kind my work i am executing but also there is another component which i am responsible for getting done but i am not actually doing it i am getting it done from someone else now when i say delegate to someone it need not always be a subordinate it could be a colleague it could be an external agency it could even be boss there are certain things which only boss can do but they are time bound and unless boss does that my action or my work is stuck so i can by all means delegate to boss delegate means why am i asking someone else to do because i can't do it but i am responsible for it that's called delegation done and then team work again team work lot of jargon and lot of hype nowadays because of that but what exactly is team work broadly two types simple team work which is one task which i am doing but i can't execute it alone i need some help some inputs from others that's why it is different from delegation delegation other than delegating and monitoring i don't do any actual effort whereas here it is one task i am going to do it i have to do it but i can't do it alone i need others help that's single task simple team work the other type of team work is multiple related tasks and obviously these tasks i am one of the persons who is doing but there is a team involved in getting it done so this is life very simple my work team work good now when we say organization how does that get formed as i said individual efficiency first then team becomes efficient and organization automatically becomes efficient fine now that work which we talked about which was of all these types right all these types also comes in two broad flavors one is structured work and the other part is unstructured work what does that really mean let me try to give you an example and in the process i'll also show you the difference between simple work and multiple related tasks so let's take few roles and examples so this is hr this simple team work this is more complex team work so finalize work from home policy obviously i need to be an hr person to do that but in order to finalize the policy i have to coordinate with some people get inputs from them get approval from them debate with them discuss brainstorm whatever but still i am putting effort i am requesting effort from others i am primarily responsible so this is my job team work whereas recruitment is an ongoing process where me multiple recruiters multiple people from business side who are going to interview multiple people from finance and external people maybe agencies are involved so that's more complex team work multiple tasks a group of predefined people working on it so these are the examples of each category i'm sure you understand the difference so that's about the work breakdown so to say now let's talk about the tools what are the tools obviously this session is about microsoft 365 so those are the tools we are talking about what does that mean office 
it was called office 365 earlier now it's rebranded as microsoft 365 fine but now is it only this no there are many many more tools and this is confusing unfortunately whether you like it or not when you buy microsoft 365 you get all these tools there is no way of saying i don't want this component or that component yes there is some licensing which primarily decides this is only browser based or you get a desktop version but you still get all these components the idea is are these components being used fully and correctly by all the users most probably no because people get confused when they see which people get confused only if you know these tools are there then you will get confused most people don't even know these exist maybe in it you know but it doesn't know how to teach this or at least how to tell this forget about teach to everyone so that's a bottleneck there and even if you finally know it again there is so much of overlap in functionality you will get confused so that's a problem how do we solve the problem we have to put two and two together so the problem is i have this work to do and i have these tools with me how do i put two and two together that's the problem that's the confusion that's the quandary that's the gap and if you bridge the gap that's called adoption simple now whether it happened for one person or 20000 people the concept is this map your needs to the correct tool now what are our needs on the face of it these look like our needs yes but i also told you each of this work whether it is this or this there is a structured component and unstructured component what does that really mean structured component of hr for example or finance how to create a budget that part is a process well defined that's the structured part of the work but when i'm actually creating the budget i will have to get data how do i get data there is no well defined process for that i get data in whichever manner i can get it someone sends me csv someone sends me excel someone somewhere i go to erp and say export to whatever and then whatever masala kichdi and then i struggle with it that is the unstructured part your domain is not helping you there your expertise your experience in your field of knowledge is absolutely useless there everyone is at the same low level struggling so that's the unstructured part but that unstructured part is where these tools are supposed to help you why because there is no separate word for lawyers and word for students and word for finance is the same tool for all roles so now that's the problem our role seems to be specific but all these products are generic so how do you make them specific to your role the idea is to understand that even if your work may be domain related the unstructured part of the work has nothing to do with the domain it's operational skills which you need so you need to broadly divide the unstructured part of the work into categories this part i am talking about so let's divide that what are the categories these are the simple categories whatever you do in life you will have to do these maybe more but definitely these create some things when i say create some things it could be mail it could be document presentation a web page whatever or a survey so like that store them somewhere execute some work communicate and coordinate analyze data and try to automate repetitive tasks if possible so this is a broad mapping of needs to solutions also very important to understand this is specifically for it and security team all these tools except for sway and forms which are purely browser tools are available on mobile sadly i have been doing this ever since office 365 exists i don't know how many years now not a single company i know which has deployed all these tools on the mobile if i go to it and ask why not there are various answers broadly the answers can be categorized as we didn't know one nobody asked two or three there is a security issue if microsoft created the products did microsoft create the products because they have nothing else to do there must be a reason they gave you a license for mobile also in fact you can put all these in one license on five devices forget five ek mein to dalo wo bhi nahi karta 
क्यों नहीं करता सम रैंडम सिक्योरिटी इशू वॉट सिक्योरिटी इशू यूजिंग एम डी एम 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 ऑल ऑफ दैम कैन बी कंट्रोल्ड प्रॉब्लम इज इट्स अ सप्लाई डिमांड इशू नहीं किया तो भी चलता है तो जाने दो क्यों तकलीफ लेने का ऐसा एटीट्यूड बहुत बार मैंने देखा है आई एम नॉट ब्लेमिंग यू एज अ इंडिविजुअल पर्सन बट दिस इज ब्रॉडली वॉट आई हैव सीन अक्रॉस कस्टमर्स सो डोंट टेक इट पर्सनली आई एम नॉट हेयर टू प्लीज एवरी वन आई एम हेयर टू गिव यू कैंडिड एक्सपीरियंस बेस्ड नॉलेज बेस्ड ओपिनियन इफ यू थिंक यू आर रॉन्ग इम्प्रूव इट इफ यू थिंक आई एम रॉन्ग टेल मी सो आई एम विलिंग टू चेंज This is not to criticize and belittle anyone. This is to empower everyone. Please understand that underlying objective with which I am showing all this in a really frank and upfront manner. So make sure all these tools are available. Once they are available and not used, that's a different problem. People have a need, but they can't use the tool because it's not available. Although technically it is available, that's called inefficiency. Okay. now the whole problem with this is when you buy a license you get all these tools and you pay something so technically you are paying some money for each of these tools and in order to get maximum return on investment on it you will have to use those tools only then you are going to get benefit now finance is interest and it is interested in getting the roi as a user i am not bothered about what is roi that is company's money how do i care of course you don't directly care about it but do you care about your life so if you care about not wasting your life it is in your interest to find what is the right tool for the right thing and as management you have spent money on it in spite of spending money you are paying microsoft every month and you are not getting any significant benefit out of it so either you stop that subscription and conclude that those products are useless or you conclude that i am useless because i am not putting enough time energy attention and effort in making sure that my organization is using it effectively do one of the two most people don't do either and just pay without realizing they are wasting money on a daily basis so that's why if you see your it expenditure on microsoft the biggest chunk is office because it's multiplied by number of people of course servers may be costlier but you don't buy 20000 servers you buy one or two servers or whatever as your office is biggest and quantifying and gaining roi of office is always a difficult thing because we don't even know how to count it what to count where to count and how to convert it to money so all that i will explain and also tell you how to maximize this so with all this gyan now let's see what are the common problems because of which all this is happening i'm going to give you a busy slide but just go through them all of them you may or may not understand i'll explain later these are the commonest mistakes i have seen on my blog if you go there is an article called worst practices of office 365 deployment i wrote that 3 4 years back every one of them is still valid so just go through this think about it i'm going to take a pause drink water and maybe if you have any questions feel free to post them and i'll answer some of them okay shesham are there any questions no questions as of now all right fine so let me quickly explain this is first lack of clarity exactly what is adoption we are going there so you will get that clarity very soon second problem is phases means many people think who controls which tools users get and in what order and the problem there is we have lot of tools as i showed you earlier so many people in it who are the decision making authority of how to get it deployed migrated whatever typically the real thing which requires effort is the mail whether it is microsoft non microsoft usually it is on premise and you have to migrate that's fine so there is some effort involved so generally exchange migration will be the first step that's fine other than that all other tools are already deployed even if you have not deployed office on desktop at least on browser it's instantly available so all these tools including outlook actually is available on browser so there is nothing to deploy yes two things you want to deploy is teams app and office yes that needs to be ideally on desktop and of course all of them on the mobile but because there is something like this many people say first phase 
is only exchange migration that will go on for whatever months depending on the organization size complexity and many other political parameters having done that second phase will be maybe teams then third phase will be one drive fourth phase will be power bi something like that power bi most people don't even want to purchase that 9 dollars so let's not talk about it at all in deployment nobody plans deployment of power bi because you have to pay extra for it but having even if we have done that it will come in some phase 4 5 that is absolutely wrong absolutely wrong why is that wrong because all these tools are designed to work together in an integrated manner so if it has given me two tools and i need one tool which is not yet deployed to make my life more efficient i have to wait for eight months that's a waste of my life yes when we did not have office 365 i did not have a choice but now that i have a choice you should not delay user's choice to use the right tool just for it's convenience and this is not even convenient for it it's a false sense of convenience why am i saying that very very many people do this because of covid or whatever majburi we deploy teams or dal diya teams sab log ave majburi mein use kar rahe hai chalo gore ro ro ke bhi use kar rahe hai theek hai people are using yes now what have we done we have given them teams do they put files on teams yes they put files on teams what happens when you put a file on teams whoever is a part of that chat group or channel automatically gets access fine done and then phase 3 sometime in life if at all will be one drive what is the purpose of one drive to store my files files which i primarily manage which for decades i am doing using local drive should ideally go to one drive now because that came as phase 3 people have already put files which should have gone to one drive onto teams and then changing it is a pain across organization so both products are now being misused so nobody is benefiting in the process i do agree that as it you need to do things in small chunks which are manageable learn from them and then go to the next step that's why we have phases absolutely correct but when you want to phase it out don't phase it out by product you deploy all products for one small group of people learn from it educate them ex refine your approach then go to the next group of people which may be same size or slightly bigger like that you keep learning keep refining and keep increasing the size of the current phase phase means number of people not number of products that's what i mean so whoever is getting it at least is getting full platform so that they can pick and choose the right tool in the right place in that way it is empowering users we will talk about the education part later so that's what i mean the next thing which is a common problem is uh, no cxo involved this typically an it initiative some people from hr or corporate communication may be involved that's it some random classroom sessions happen nowadays everything online so it's launch tick mark these if there is no cxo involved what happens it says okay we have deployed something so let's teach people few sessions nowadays location doesn't matter so few sessions for each product and that's the end of the story yes microsoft has a success.office.com whatever site there are launch material posters all that is okay but that is for launch what happens after launch nothing and when you do a launch for say teams or one drive or sharepoint or whatever do you think everyone is attending no or maybe you did a session for all these tools most commonly i'll tell you what people do they will do a session definitely some training on teams because that is a hot topic outlook everyone assumes everyone knows so no training office no training one drive may or may not be and then power bi may be some training power automate power apps may be but that only for power users technical people dev people that's it so a scattered number of products were covered in the training so a subset of products were covered in the training now suppose you did training for one two three four five six products what is the chance that each training was attended by all users no someone attended only this training someone attended only this training someone only this maybe this and this with no correlation whatsoever so subset of products are being taught to subset of people 
which it's just an obvious disaster how can you even expect anything to improve out of that so don't do that the correct idea i will tell you i'm not just talking negative i will tell you positive also don't worry but in order to understand what positivity i'm talking about you need to understand the mistakes and if you follow the approach you will bypass or surpass or not commit these mistakes another one teams although it is being used we are only using a part of teams you need to use teams fully and i will explain that in the next section so that's more coverage coming very soon another one just because we are using all these tools doesn't automatically mean our old inefficiency is implicitly taken care of if you have long standing bad habits just by using a new product those bad habits don't get nullified and the biggest bad habit in the world bad habit when i say bad it's bad from two points of view one is productivity and one is security both ways it is bad attaching a file is a disaster every day you can go to your telemetry if you are an admin and see how many attachments are going and after office 365 has come in have attachments gone down nothing must have gone down that means we are misusing the attachments feature why should attachments be there because in earlier days we moved from paper to email that time email and attachment was a novelty and it was the greatest of innovation but that was 20 years back now just because attachments are easy to attach doesn't mean we attach them we have to think by attaching a file is it helping me or troubling me if it is troubling me i should find an alternative and that alternative is available to us in the form of what in the form of deciding and giving the discretionary knowledge to people so that they are themselves compelled to say oh putting a file on local drive and attaching these are the problems on the other hand if i put it on one drive what happens why should i use one drive because it told me sorry i don't like it i will not use it but if someone is told that if you put this on one drive you are going to get these many benefits and of course you have to tell them at least few lines and a couple of minutes demo of each then say oh what is the extra effort i have to do for this oh nothing instead of uh, clicking on my pc i clicked on one drive same folders are available there then done very good now we are not forcing anything on people we are showing what we were doing was bad but we did not have a choice so we got used to the badness or inefficiency now there is a better way available by all means you can continue to be inefficient but why do you want to waste time in this there is so much better use that time for something else what should i use it for oh whatever will drive your growth that's why i have established the basic objective first grow karna hai na grow karne ke liye time nahi hai na idhar bachao udhar dalo save time here reduce inefficiency leads to time saving use that time to do other activities which you always wanted to do but you could not because of shortage of time it's that simple once everyone gets this clear then everyone is more open to all kinds of ideas and that simple thing never happens for every person in the organization that's the problem so that's what i mean convert this into something which is so compelling that people are wanting to use it happily and willingly rather than forcing it on them then another problem security versus productivity whenever i ask people oh, uh, external sharing of one drive links is it allowed say so, no security ne bol diya nahi hai are security ne ye nahi bola ki attachment bhi insecure hai once you send an attachment do you have control over it no 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 we have dlp does your dlp scan every file you have so many sensitive data types that every file is dlp protected sorry i don't think so so just for some tick mark called dlp which i am not saying wrong it is correct other files at least allow to share outside as a link otherwise what are people doing today they are sharing files yes of course they are sharing files how are they sharing files by either sending an attachment or putting it in a chat either way multiple people open multiple copies then copy paste copy paste copy paste in entire life is getting spent on this on the other hand if you allow people to share the files like this notice what is happening yes if you would if you are worried about 
your users being so dumb that they don't understand the difference between a link for anonymous means anybody can use or specific people by all means you can disable it but i would suggest there may be a genuine need for some files to be sent as an anonymous link have you thought of that maybe i'm launching a new product i have created a nice brochure and i want that brochure to go to as many people as i want i don't want people to put some otp for that i want broad base i want to broad base it i want to popularize it so give people discretion that this is dangerous this is now in regular way what happens you send a mail with attachment that is equivalent to this really when i send the mail to someone else what that person does do you know that person can put it on some public site do you have any control do you have any visibility do you have any audit trail no so compare that with sending attachment when i send sorry uh, sending links when i send a link outside so many benefits happen to me none of these are available for attachments external party if i send it to and that's where most security people seem to have an unfounded objection the external person has to prove that they actually own the email id they click on the link it's not going to open you have to wait for a mail to come with the otp and then you enter it and then the file will open now this is safer than sending an attachment this is better security as well not just convenience so you can block download copy all of that can be easily done from the sharing dialog by the way this sharing dialog is exactly the same on mobile on tablet on browser or a desktop app so one dialog you have to teach everyone that itself will dramatically reduce attachments increase security and increase collaboration and save time just one dialog teach this to people and allow them to use one drive proactively so what are the other benefits just to complete the topic if you make a mistake let's say you sent a brochure and then you found a spelling mistake or the contact number changed or the logo itself changed or the brand color changed or the product got revised and colors changed i have already sent attachments now what recall never works really so why send another one if you had sent it as a link you change the whatever uh, mis mistake it was latest version is always visible very useful for not just brochures but things like price list or inventory available or whatever where you want to keep changing and you want people to have latest version at all times without struggling kaun sa mail aaya tha is this the latest mail which is adding confusion and then can stop sharing any time this is also important attachment is gone gone no control here full control and in addition to all this you get a proper audit trail if you are really worried you can actually enable auditing in one drive which will give you even more comprehensive audit trail so security is better with this that's why as far as possible encourage people to share links there may be few requirements legal or statutory where you can 100% send attachments but what is the breakup now this type yes send attachments this type don't send attachment this is much bigger in terms of day to day work this is 80 to 90% of files 10% going attachment absolutely fine and microsoft is actually helping you observe this in it we have something called a productivity score so even if you are not from it go back and ask your it person show me the productivity score if you are the boss by all means not only should you ask you should put it in the kpi of the it person that this score also has to increase there are three very important scores you have to manage what are those three scores there are three very important scores let me just switch tracks and show you that because later on we are not going to have time for this you don't need to be a technical person to understand you just need to know three numbers how those three numbers come yes there you need to be a little technical but now mind there is a security score there is a compliance score and there is a productivity score very very critical and everyone in it and security at least not only should know these scores you should go and find areas of improvement which are nicely listed there with effort involved with the impact 
how much impact it will have on the score exactly what are the steps involved in getting it done all that is well documented so take this up but the best part about all this is all this is not just to harden and make everything tighter so that users can't do anything properly or easily so that's another very important part of what microsoft does microsoft creates products for productivity as well as security so whether you have microsoft products or not doesn't matter but your basic fundamental way of working should be if you increase security productivity or convenience or efficiency gets hampered on the other hand if you make everything very liberal obviously security holes will open we don't want to do either so it's not security versus it is security plus productivity and if you don't understand how to do it learn the microsoft platform correctly and why because microsoft has created the security products as well as productivity which is, has been their core for 30 years so they are not going to create something which hampers this and why did we discuss or why did we start discussing this particular thing because i wanted to show you a quick report which tells you this is the productivity score and when you go to the productivity score it will give you a number and then it will break it down further for you and what happens in the breakdown is it actually shows you what is happening in terms of communication what is happening in terms of meeting content collaboration teamwork mobility and so on so if you go to each of them let's say 83 percent of people in an organization collaborate online using files so that's what we are talking about readers creators and collaborators three categories now notice this is attached physical files this is so this is what you have to monitor this should decrease this should increase that's called quantifiable tangible benefit oriented impact and this is easy to do it can give you much more granular description and details if you install the power bi version of this report as well now this is a sample so you are not seeing real data here you will probably have many more users so this will give you live realistic picture so do that all right so coming back to our fundamental problem what did we start this with we started this with the thread which was security and productivity is not a versus it is a plus and then measurement i just touched upon it but there is very extensive measurement available in admin center where you can monitor save the baseline so that you can compare how things are improving now assume all this is done what is the kind of impact you get that is also something to understand i'll show you a couple of case studies i'll show you two types of case studies one is purely office based and why am i saying that because what is this microsoft 365 if you understand the licensing of microsoft 365 you will understand that there are multiple SKUs. so i will just show you that part because this is important to understand I am not talking about the pricing and I am not uh, an expert in the licensing part but what I want to show you is this. We have something called different types of plans and Microsoft 365 basically is Office 365 plus security plus Windows. We are talking about Windows and security comes into infra and IT part which we are not discussing today much. So this is what is the difference. So I am don't look at the exact numbers look at the difference so this is 500 this is 1000 rupees extra and this is 2000 rupees extra so what are we paying this 1000 rupee extra for the answer is desktop version of office understand what are we paying this extra 1000 for basically power bi and more security so the question is when we have this or this or this what is common office and when we are teaching people about how to use these tools correctly the idea is office is an integral part of it all these tools are designed to work with office and integrate extremely well 
So if you don't teach people how to use Office itself, you can't adopt Office 365. And even if you go through Microsoft's official documentation on best practices for adoption, there is no mention of Office. Everyone assumes everyone knows Office. That's a completely wrong thing. It's a miracle that people are still continuing to do business. So first I will show you example of how much improvement can happen if you just improve Office usage. So these are the examples. This is just purely using Office. These are customer names. I have worked with these 14 people, for example, in SBI Life. I looked at what work they are doing just with Office. No OneDrive, no Teams, no Power BI, nothing. And then I said, oh, this is not the right way. This is the right way. Then we quantified the time saving, found out how often that activity was done. Then we could find the yearly number. And with just 14 people, one week of exercise, we could document this much of time saving, just time saving. There were other benefits like improved processes, multiple processes actually getting eliminated or getting combined, improved accuracy, lesser operational risk and all those. But what is countable, tangible, time saving. So that itself is significant. So this is the importance of office. You cannot ignore office because you spend four hours every day on it. So include office in whatever adoption efforts you are doing on a daily basis. Now I'll go one step further. There's a case study for Toyota, which I did a longer exercise with. So they started with uh, Office 365 deployment and then we said, okay, let's make better, effective, efficient use. Now, you know, Toyota worldwide is known for their efficiency practices. They taught the world what manufacturing efficiency is, the Toyota way. Having said that, when it comes to unstructured work, nobody has processes, including Microsoft. Microsoft has no SOPs for how to use Office. Toyota also did not have. So they gave us a target that we have to show tangible improvement of 2% of time every day. And what happened in the process, that has to be quantified for every user, not just at some random telemetry level. It has to be quantified and Toyota management has to approve it. So with that, 2% means what? Practically speaking, 2% means what? 2% means what? 15, 30 minutes, something like that. Some, some between 15, 30 per day. So we were able to deliver 4% tangible time saving. That means 40 minutes approx per user per day, quantified, demonstrable, provable. And then all this was achieved in four months. 1,300 users were coached. Every user was coached, including and starting with CXOs, not the reverse. Generally, we do Janta training first and then Bosco time nahi hai. That doesn't work. Bosco time nahi hai, to ye ROI aane wala hai nahi hai. To paisa dena band karo Microsoft ko. That's the only choice. Bosco time chahiye because who is the beneficiary? Boss or management is the most uh, going to benefit the most is the boss because if subordinates are inefficient implicitly boss's output is inefficient if subordinates are efficient even if boss is inefficient probably their productivity will increase so it's absolutely even if everyone looks at it purely from a selfish angle everyone has to be involved there were no files on OneDrive but of course, there are now millions of files on OneDrive. Nobody actually stores a file on local drive at all because they've understood it's stupid to do it. When you have OneDrive, storing a file on local drive is literally stupid unless you want to trouble yourself or there is a seriously genuine reason for whatever genuine, I'm saying business reason for keeping it locally. There does not seem to be any logical reasoning for putting it on local drive. And there are lots of teams, not just for meeting and chat, but actual work projects happening on teams and external vendors are also a part of it. These OneDrive files are properly and securely shared with external parties, suppliers, dealers, distributors, even customers. And this part we will cover later. We created as 50 SOPs also for them. We will come to that a little later. So that is, I'm saying, if you don't follow 
in the or if you don't fall into all the problems which we discussed earlier and then do all this properly this kind of results are absolutely possible so when toyota had to stop everything because of covid they had very little discontinuity or impact on users because everyone was already good with using the cloud correctly so just people carried their laptops home and continued working as though nothing has happened of course manufacturing part is a separate issue because there is physical presence and machines but i am saying from an operational point of view very little negative impact so now let's come back to some of the topics which i wanted to go into greater depth so case study we have seen now this is probably the most important part of this nobody is responsible for adoption is it responsible for adoption it is not responsible for making sure that all the tools are fully used by all the users why it is responsible for it tools they will obviously do a good job of it but it has limited or no control over how individual user is going to use OneDrive or Excel or PowerPoint or Teams. IT can't dictate beyond the point. IT can suggest. That's all. IT can tell people, we have given you this, use it. But if people resist, they are not going to be in a position to authoritatively tell them to use it. That's a problem. So then who is responsible and capable? Both things have to be required. HR, maybe HR can do this. Capability building is their job. So when Office 365 is being done, HR will arrange some training, no doubt, along with IT. Very good. Problem is when that happens, like I said, it's a subset of a subset of a subset. Subset of products, within each product, subset of features, and within the organization, subset of people. So it's a disaster. Nobody even has a thought process of teaching everything to everyone because teaching everything to everyone, that sentence itself sounds impossible. So, I will tell you how exactly to go about doing it. But first, who is responsible for adoption and why should someone be responsible? For two reasons. One, you have spent money, use it properly. Otherwise, don't use it. Remove that. Don't pay subscription. Stop using office. And then, no problem. But if you are paying money, it is in your interest to get return on investment. And return on investment is going to come only if people use it properly. Now, who is responsible? Who paid the money? Let's make that person responsible. CFO is a very good candidate for that. But why CFO? CFO can control finance team's behavior. Can CFO control sales team's behavior? No. So who can control everyone's behavior? Potentially CEO. So unless your CEO and then direct reports are completely sold on the idea that spending money for this platform is completely a loss-making proposition, unless we put our foot into it, nothing is going to happen. So whether you are a management person or not, you go back and try to convince your management that this is a very important activity. It's good for them. It's good for everyone in the organization. And if organization is efficient, everyone externally, including customers, are going to benefit. And it's actually going to drive growth. Imagine if everyone saves one hour every day and uses it intelligently, don't you think it will drive growth? And how much investment it's already done have you written a line of code or program nothing it is out of the box it's waiting to be exploited so that's what mm -hmm. you have to emphasize and do this now there is another jargon or goalie as i call it which is true but it is given undue importance and that's called change management all of you may or may not be aware of this subject but this is a popular jargon even in Microsoft's official documentation and services, this features predominantly, which is fine, nothing wrong with that. Any change needs to be managed, whether it is technology or otherwise. So some change management process methodology needs to be utilized, no doubt about it. There are many of them available. Just for the sake of completeness, completeness these are the various types available. Which one to use depends on your organization. So Microsoft usually recommends uh, and uh, in general in change management as a subject I'm talking about not specific to technology or specific to office. The ADCAR method is supposed to be very popular. I am also a certified 
at Car Orb. The name of the company is Prosai. Prosai Certified Change Management Consultant. That's what the thing you get, which I am. So that adoption methodology is called Ad Car. What does that mean? You create awareness about what is available first, then people will hopefully have desire to use it. If they have the desire, they will learn it. So they'll gain some knowledge. Then they will use that knowledge and improve their ability. And of course, this cannot happen only at the launch time. It needs to be reinforced. That's the idea. So simplified version of this, which I use, people have to know what is available. Only then anything else can happen. Then, even after I know something, just because I know it, I'm not going to use it. Many people attend training, clap, give 5 out of 5 feedback, go home and continue working inefficiently. I have to start thinking, am I wanting to remain inefficient or no? So some amount of self-actualization kind of thing has to happen. Because we are used to inefficiency, changing is hard. Even though you need, understand the need for it, it's like I am obese but I don't go to gym. Same kind of thing here. But when you think and apply it to business context, then you will say, oh, this can be applied here. Ah, Then you try applying it and see, is it giving me benefit? Very good. Then think, if I get this benefit, will it be helpful to for me to go grow in my life in some way or the other? Yes, then I will want to use it. Then if I use it and people around me don't, what is the point? Their inefficiency will rub on me. So let's standardize it. And once this process is well oiled and everyone is doing it for every activity and then you have to repeat it across the organization. So this is the didactic version of ADCAR. This is the simplified version of ADCAR. Concept must understand. So now it comes to actually this all looks good in PowerPoint. Who will do it? So as I said, top management has to know all this. Only when top management knows this, they will go further or anybody will go further. Without top management support, it just becomes a tick mark for IT and HR. If you have done some activities for adoption, end of story, done. And then if someone asks ROI, I say users are not using. Who are users? You can't ask hundreds and thousands of users why you are not using. And who is going to ask some person in management who is non-technical? who is also a user, who is also not using. So it's a tragedy of errors, not even a comedy of errors. That way. So how do we break that cycle? Four step process. All this which I am showing you has to be taught to your management. You go and do it, you show it in the video, sit on their head, whatever, or your management, hopefully you have already understood. First step is to make top management understand that if Whatever may be our business, whatever size of company, country, industry, whether we are doing good or bad, are we affected by COVID positively, negative, doesn't matter. Office, if you use this platform well, life can only grow upwards in whichever state you are in, whichever industry you are in. Once that is done, what is the job of leaders? Their job is to lead and find strategies to grow business. This is something sitting in front of you for 30 years and nobody looked at it. Nobody looked at it means what we look at it every day and misuse it and underuse it and inefficiency use it. Now look at it from a different perspective as a strategic growth driver. So much potential, already investment done, just extra effort which can be led by leaders. Once they understand it, then the next steps can happen. Now, I do this for a living. During COVID itself, I have done at least sessions for 210, I think, approximately customers across seven, eight countries. All were attended by leaders because my session is not arranged unless CXOs are not there. End of story. I don't do sessions for only users. I don't do sessions for only IT or security because I am not an expert in IT and security per se. They are already good at it. What am I going to add value? So unless there is leaders in the room, I don't do session. So having done this, I have been able to convince all of them that this is great. I get amazing feedback. People are very happy saying, Aapne Tomari Zindagi Sudhar Di. But six months later, nothing has happened. Why does that happen? Because the next step is not taken. 
just leaders being excited is not enough because leaders are also users. We fall back to our inefficiency very quickly after a week or 15 days. So second step, which nobody does in across my 200 customers I have covered, I know personally they have not done and I'm sure you can vouch for it in your own organizations. This has not happened. Office as a platform touches everyone. Even if you don't use every tool, some tool everyone is using every day. So everyone should know about the platform. Everyone is the keyword. When I say everyone, what does that mean? If you have bought licenses for office, very many people buy different type of licenses. Sasta wala 90% logon ke liye. The cheaper one for 90%. Manga wala thoda 100 logon ke liye 10%. And this is only for playing around for IT or only for security team. So let's say 90%, 10% or 1%, something like that. When I say everyone, I mean everyone. There are tools which are common across all the SKUs. You see the tick marks? Those tick marks should be known to people. Am I saying hands-on training? No. I am saying create awareness. If this is the business need, this is the tool to be used. At least that much. A one-hour training, one way. What is the excuse for that? How many people do you have? You have 1 lakh people? No problem. You go to Teams, create a live event. The capacity is 20,000. It's already there in the license. You don't pay anything. You will say, okay, 20,000, 5 sessions, 1 lakh people or 100,000 people are covered. But no, all 100,000 can't come like, okay, do 5, no, 10 sessions, same topics. Let everyone get covered. What is the problem? I have still not understood. I keep asking customers, why aren't you doing it? What is the constraint? Am I saying call me and pay me? No, I am saying you do it internally, but someone has to do it. Otherwise, those people who attended my session were 3% of the organization, rest of 97% never understands, they are never going to use it. So the second step is conduct a session which explains to them what are the tools, what are the capabilities and how to map them to business context and then leave people alone. Why is this important? Because only when people are aware what is available, then they will start thinking about their job, their activities, their work units, tasks and say, oh, I think this will fit here. If I don't know technology exists, how will I use the technology? Now IT knows the technology, but IT doesn't know all the business aspects. That's why this has to be done for everyone. And then once someone says, yes, this is a better way of doing it, validate it check how many other people are going to benefit from it if it is few people just train them and finish it off if it's a large number of people then for that activity which is now optimized can you do another round of training because people have already undergone some training most people will not come so now you still need to make sure whether you have attended the training or not this particular activity the best way to do it is this way then you convert that into a standard operating procedure who will convert it? The person who first thought this feature can map to this business process will suggest the SOP. Maybe there is a group of people who agree to it. Like we have Kaizen where there is a committee who agrees and accepts. And then once it is accepted, who is going to distribute that SOP and make sure everyone in the organization uses the SOP. SOP means standard, no excuse. Unless you give me a better SOP, you better use this one. Who has that authority? The person who created the SOP does not have that authority. Does IT have that authority? No. Who has the authority? The business head. So again, back to leaders. SOPs have to be distributed and popularized, internalized, institutionalized, whatever term you want to use by leaders. The mail has to come from boss's mailbox. Only then it will work. Now this is a long term process. Who is going to do that long term? That's another thing. So first step, IT enabler gives everything to everyone in a nice way. Security, combine security and productivity. Platform is ready to be utilized. Tell the bosses what is the benefit. Get bosses excited. Get everyone excited. And then create SOPs and standardize. How do you do it long term? So we need another kind of role which can be called ambassadors or champions. Some people from IT can be there, HR, every department, some so-called power users. They need to understand 
how to do this on a long term basis because we don't want all this to die out after a few months back to square one or back to negative one actually so these are the people who need to understand one very important skill what is that skill how to convert technology to business benefit so i'll give you an example many of us have uh, group mailboxes right what is a group mailbox group mailbox means we have a mailbox which is shared in a group yes obviously but why do we do that let's say this is a recruiter recruitment uh, mailbox what is happening here group mailbox recruiters are a part of it and what happens here lots of mails come what are these mails resumes and then what happens a group of people who are called scan that mailbox every day or whatever frequency and then they recruit this recruit is one word but there are multiple steps involved so suppose i get 30 resumes in my mailbox today and 20 tomorrow and then there are six recruiters involved who is handling which one which candidate is being handled by whom there is confusion so now we need to have some coordination file how will we create the coordination file uh, some excel file just may candidate ka naam dalega and then name of the candidate date status something like that now where will this file be oh i don't know whoever thought of creating it on that person's or some shared folder so it's you can see it's very soon becoming a vicious cycle very sad part of the game having done that now is this a common requirement yes is there a better way of doing it absolutely what do you do you create a team in teams for recruitment what is the problem with this approach what we just did i have multiple positions open and people or candidates are giving or say sending their resumes to the same mailbox so again there is a mix up of what role they are applying for maybe it is clear by looking at the subject maybe it is not so another round of confusion so you create a team called recruitment and then you say create channels in the team called finance manager role open fine and then you want say a python developer no problem and then you want someone in manufacturing planning whatever separate channels now the problem is what is the point who will be a part of this team obviously the recruitment team those six people but how will thousands of unknown people send a mail to it no problem you go to teams and in teams there is a feature which allows you to do what it allows you to accept accept what let's say this was the team right click get an email address a unique email address is created for that channel you publish that email address for that role now if someone replies to that or sends a mail with attachment to that email that email will automatically land in the channel and coordination is much simpler so this is mapping business to technology if this is not done what happens everyone is using teams nobody right clicked or clicked on these three dots nobody noticed this even if you noticed it koi security wala bola nahi nahi ye allowed nahi hai chalo mand khatam entire thing died there or someone noticed it they said group mailbox ye hey, aisa kaisa weird mail aaya ye chhod do ye samjha nahi again that opportunity is lost like that every moment there are thousands of features waiting to be exploited and probably you have seen this before but just to give you the quantification of how bad the situation is if you count all the features like this there are 14000 plus features and typical organization on a day user basis we use very sad very small and that to we misuse that's your opportunity so this is not used not because those features are useless they are not used because they are not known so who is going to know them that's the question if we have some entity which can know it proactively and map it then it's an opportunity so that 
top management doesn't have time it doesn't know all the business aspects so it has to be what we call as ambassadors or champions which can be assisted by it but they have to come from business side what are they supposed to do they can be taught how to do this process of learning tools and applications simply by exploring and then learn the functionality then think where can you apply it in business context then share that finding with a central committee which can decide whether this is widely applicable or not and if yes then teach everyone and repeat this process so that's what everyone every organization has to aim for where will these champions come from they don't fall from the sky these have to be a couple of people per department exact number is not important i have seen companies start with 300 of them and after 6 months seven were left that too not active so don't be too enthusiastic the most important part is these people who are called champions need time to learn technology and then think where to apply it who is going to allow them to spend that time only bosses so who should nominate champions bosses so ask every boss to nominate a couple of people from their department keep a buffer some people may change roles leave the company fall sick whatever so keep that buffer and then these people proactively follow this process if you want you can even gamify it right you can have a contest for if this contest has to be ongoing because productivity needs to be ongoing contest has to be ongoing what do you do you ask people now that i have shown you what is office 365 or platform you think where you will apply it try to apply it find the benefits quantify the benefits here is a form fill at nomination every month or whatever frequency initially you do it weekly so that there is good and when people stabilize maybe monthly but it has to continue lifelong with and then top n are chosen every month and given significant prizes if who is going to decide have a committee which top management whoever it is this is how you are going to sustain so now i have also told you a four step process process looks nice but now we know who is going to do what and this part champions are going to do so if you can manage all this you will grow faster that's the idea of adoption i have not gone into individual technical details of this but i will give you some quick wins what does that mean with so many ideas now you may get confused exactly ja ke kya karu what should i go and do yeah pdca i understand pdca is very common in manufacturing head car yes fine never mind even if you don't know any jargon you understand the concept most of this is common sense made more complicated with some jargon that's a funny way of saying that but another reason why jargon comes is when knowledgeable people talk to each other they want to be brief that's why jargon gets created that's why acronym gets created but that jargon comes in the way when a person knowledgeable in one field is talking to a person who is not knowledgeable in that field and that is the disconnect between it on one side and users on other side users are not supposed to understand technology it is supposed to simplify for them that way it also as an it person you will grow better in your career and you will be able to empower users also so it's a win win situation so first things you have to do is start people show people that teams is not just for meetings and chat teams is capable of doing all this in one tool most people are doing this and this that too inappropriately what does that mean yes you can do a chat very easily but when do you do chat so i told you there are two types of work right two types of team work i mean so one type of team work is single simple team work where few people are involved i get the job done finish this is okay to do on chat this should not be done on chat because that's a project that should be done on what in fact if you ask where is this kind of done thing done i showed you a group mailbox too many mails going even projects are managed like that projects are managed by project teams yes there is a project plan yes but still the day to day coordination amongst this cross functional team of people which could be external as well 
happens primarily by sending updates and updated task lists and who did what using mail which is a disaster and obviously are going to be a part of multiple projects so this is your dumping ground called inbox you are drowning there is that a fault of inbox no inbox is supposed to be only one is that a part of the fact that you have multiple projects running no that's your job you have to do it but something which is many should not be done in something which is one that's the problem that's what we have not realized because for many years this was the only choice but now don't create or manage projects in inbox because it's obviously the wrong place to do so create a team for that not a group chat that's what i mean this is the education you have to tell people if multiple people are involved on a longer term basis and there is lot of discussion files and meetings involved do not do it in group chat create a team in teams and then create channels within it and within the channels you can do whatever you want once this thought process is clear then people will find scenarios where this can be really really effective so here are the scenarios these are quick wins any periodic review create a team for it any shared task list team common data entry do it in lists and put that list in a team because it's never just data entry data entry will be get consolidated there will be reports the formats will keep changing there will be action items so it requires a team then departmental shares don't do it stop all the departmental g colon m colon put them on teams not sharepoint teams is sharepoint so all the benefits of sharepoint and all the simplicity of teams best of both worlds group mailboxes we already covered and anything which is a recurring meeting when you are about to create a recurring meeting stop doing it and create a chat uh, not chat sorry teams team not group chat that's an absolute instant quick win the second quick win is educate people including it and security people about the fact that attachment should only be sent when mandatory and everything else should be either put on one drive or teams depending on who is primarily managing the file if traditionally i would have put the file on my documents then i would put it on one drive if it's a part of a complicated multitask project then put it directly into some teams channel data cleanup again this is not related to teams this is related to power bi even if you are not having power bi excel has power bi inside it it's called get and transform data teach this to everyone this will save at least an hour per day for heavy users of excel because they are spending their life cleaning up data this is the most important part of excel this is the least least uh, used part of excel and very rarely training on data analytics will include this people will go to power bi typically or even in excel they will go to so called advanced excel where data cleanup is not covered cover this instant benefit another one blank dashboard power bi desktop is free get your data imported into that whether it is csv whatever and that has a simple very powerful set of tools like question and answer or explain the decrees i have uh, just conducted live sessions on both i am going to give you a page at the end of it i will add this to the page so that you can see those videos so just import your data in whatever data you have in the blank power bi dashboard and during the meeting use these q and a feature as well as explain increase decrease feature to never say i will get back to you that's transformation quick win everyone should do it for every piece of data and then eliminate csv this is for it stop giving people csvs if you have power bi convert it to data sets and data sets integrate with excel now so if you want to give authoritative clean proper uh, related auto refreshed safe data to people stop sending them files where does that data land up then if you have proper version of office data get data power bi this is data certified by it or the data team that's another way of improving users lives because they are not spending any time in data cleaning and they are getting clean accurate data which can be auto refreshed when the server side refreshes
and finally wherever there is excel based data entry sending files to each other and consolidating create a team add lists and capture data there so these are the quick wins so with that i hope you have got a better understanding of how all this can fall into place and now i am also sure you know at your level what are you going to do if you are a user identify inefficient practices find the best way try to convert it to sop and try to teach this to these people if you are it correct your mistakes look for proactively teaching users convince top management to do a session for everyone make sure everything is enabled and there is no security is not being used as an excuse you have, and security team has to find ways to utilize the platform in the correct way and if you do use it in the correct way security will be highest possible level without compromising productivity and one immediate action point enable two factor authentication for everyone and enable bit locker and windows pin on every laptop two immediate action points if you have not done it already and business leaders i am sure if you are a leader you understand if everyone in the organization does this how much benefit you will get so whoever you are you know what to do at your level and what to do at for convincing the other parties so that's it thank you bye bye take care be safe get vaccinated